Cynthia, please. Cynthia, give me an F. I will sing the song of heaven into the one who is seated on the throne. And I will lift my voice, singing worthy is the Lamb that was slain. And I will sing the song of the redeemed. You're playing the same as the acoustic. So if you can't hit the note, just drop it and she'll pick it up for you, okay? It's the best thing about having a team. We're here for each other. Are you guys ready? It's seven o'clock. Ready? All right, church. Welcome out to our Wednesday evening service. Let's find our seats and put our hands together and sing that song, Savior of the Nations. song to the Lord. Let the nation see that our God alone is wonderful. Every day his people shout, the Lord has Jesus, Jesus, Savior of the nation. Jesus, Jesus. 
song of heaven to the one who is seated on the throne. I will lift my voice and I will lift my voice. Singing worthy is the Lamb that was slain. And I will sing the song of the redeemed. The price was paid by His slow things down this evening we're gonna lift our voices in our hands and sing that song my God is awesome come on church sing it with me my God is awesome my God is awesome he can move mountains keep me in the valley hide me my God is awesome he heals me when I'm broken strings where I've been weakened. Come on church, let's sing that again. My God is awesome. My God is awesome. He can move mountains. Keep me in the valley. Hide me from the rain. My God is awesome. He heals me when I'm broken. Strings where I've Sing with me. My God is awesome. 
that song with me how great is our God the splendor of the King clothed in majesty and clothed in majesty let all the earth rejoice all the earth. oh he wraps himself and he wraps himself in line in darkness tries to hide in darkness tries to hide it trembles at his voice it trembles at his voice come on church let's sing it how great and how great your name hallelujah thank you jesus we have a jen she's been sick since saturday and we need healing in her body 
There are many people who are not uh, being brought uh, up here this evening, but we know that they are sick in body, and we want to pray for continued healing, and our sister Pat Augustinelli continue healing, and our sister Helene, Bob Gansler, Richard Paola, Richard Kennedy, uh, Ron Irizarry, these are many people that are sick in body, and we're believing in a miracle, and we know that God has the power and the authority to heal them, so we are contending for that. We want to lift up those who are backslidden or maybe who have come to this church and who have yet to return. We need God to do a miracle in their hearts and to bring them to salvation to give them the salvation that he's given, recent backsliders recently, that God is just going to do a miracle in their hearts. We want to lift up those new converts that have been coming in recently that God is going to do um, a hastening in their hearts, give them a love and compassion, a burden for the word of God to help our new converts to grow. We want to lift up this city, Rochester, New York, if you listen to the news every morning, it's very tragic what's going on, but we believe and we know that revival is coming to this city, so we need to contend corporately for that as believers, that God is going to lower the murder rates, the addiction, the suicide, the depression. God has the power to do all things, and we need to contend for that as a congregation. We want to lift up our pioneer churches or our baby works in Greece and Brockport and Syracuse, that God would have right of way, that he would do a quick work in those cities, bring these churches off of support so we can continue to do that. what we've been taught and instilled to plant churches. We want to lift up our area, um, uh, Buffalo, I apologize, uh, Troy, Chicopee, uh, these are surrounding churches, Pittsburgh, that God would just help these churches and have right of way. We want to lift up our uh, conference churches, Pastor Campo and Cape, Pastor uh, Suspansky in Jacksonville, Pastor Greg and his staff in Prescott, Arizona, Pastor LaValle, they are having Bible conference next week. Pray and contend that God is going to do a great work there in that city. Also pray that God would bless them with their church building as they need tremendously. God has blessed us so he can absolutely bless others. We want to also pray for the anointing on the service here tonight, that God would help us, that we believe this place changed, restored, and renewed. How many of you guys have needs on your heart? God sees those needs, and our brother Corey is going to come open us up in prayer this evening. Oh God, we thank you. Oh God, that we have access to your throne. God, for the power that is in your name. God, we need you, God. Oh God, to come down to this place here tonight. God, heal those who are sick in body. Oh, God, those who are wounded, God, oh, we need God. Father, we thank you for the opportunity here tonight to worship and be a part of what you're going to do in this place, God. I pray right now you'd have your hand upon each physical need that's been laid before you here, whether it be big or small, God, I pray for supernatural healing to be loosed in this place, even here tonight. God, I pray that you would loose the supernatural in this place, that your evidence would be seen, that no one could deny the truth which you are. God, I pray right now that you would have your hand upon each one of these area works, God, each one of the churches out of this congregation, God. I pray you bless them, each one of these areas, God. I pray you give supernatural wisdom and insight and dominion into each one of these works, God. I pray that there be a quick work, that there be a hastening of each one of these areas. God, I pray right now, even for this place, even tonight, God, that we would have an opportunity to, to be at the throne of heaven to, to meet with you here that as we worship you. We leave it in your hands, oh God, for all that you will to do in this place and far beyond. Go with us even in, into all of this country and all the world, God. I pray right now that you would have a supernatural touch here tonight. Let's give God praise. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yada yada la la rebe kio no lo lo rebe be be be. Hallelujah. Church, turn them to someone and make him feel welcome this evening.
Hallelujah. We want to welcome you all to the Potter's House Christian Fellowship. If you're a guest, welcome to our church this evening. We're going to go over a few announcements that we have. Uh, we're going to go over our regular services. We do have a Sunday school service at 9.30. We will be starting a new series this Sunday with Pastor Sullivan called Let Us. This is from the book of Hebrews. Let us is mentioned 11 times throughout the book of Hebrews, and Pastor is going to be using that in a series. We do have our Sunday morning service at 10.30, our Sunday evening service at 6 p.m., prayer is at 5 p.m., our Wednesday evening service, which you were at in case you didn't know, prayer started at 6. We do have outreach this Saturday at 11 a.m., and prayer is at 10 p.m. Song service practice to all those who are part of the song service team. Please uh, be advised that it is this Sunday directly after service. Please have rides, new converts, and children situated beforehand. May 12th is youth group. You can see John, uh, Jonica, Jeremy and Annika for details. Next week, it's combined. It's okay. Tired. Toronto Bible Conference, May 8th through the 12th. This is next week. If you guys are going and you are part of ministry, please let pastor and please let a ministry leader know so we can make plans accordingly. That would be tremendously grateful. May 14th, we'll be sharing the movie Jesus Revolution. If I'm not mistaken, this is from the late 1960s, early 1970s, of um, the Jesus, how the Jesus People Movement actually would our fellowship Pastor Wayman Mitchell was birthed out of. Very excited for that, but please make note that we are starting service a half hour early at 5.30. May 20th and the 21st, we will be having Eric Strutz. If you don't know who Eric Strutz is, he once pastored this church, and he'll be here on the 20th. We'll be doing a dinner with him, and uh, that'll be Saturday times, and details will be discussed later. And the 21st, he will be ministering in the Sunday morning and the Sunday evening service. May 27th. We have a concert outside on the grass at 7 p.m. Please contend and pray for that and invite people out. There are flyers in the back. May 29th, there is a Memorial Day picnic. I don't have times. I don't have location. I just know the date. If you have any questions for details, see Harry or see Pastor, please. Appreciate that. All right, please remember, do not park on this side of the building in front of the fire lane. That would be greatly appreciated. Also... This parking lot here, many people park there for morning prayer, or whether that be for services. Starting this Friday, you guys are no longer allowed to park there. They're going to be working on the parking lot, which is very exciting. So please do not park near that parking lot, especially near the entrances in the fire lane, as we had discussed. This will be tremendously helpful. If not, I will pull you out with my Chevy 2500. All right. That's all I have. Uh, our brother Darren's going to pull up a picture for us. All right, so if you guys don't know, this is Pastor Matt and Sarah's new building. So I shared with you guys on Sunday how um, one of our new converts was like, wow, this Brockport building's amazing. And, you know, we had talked about how tremendous blessing it was to have, you know, Mike and Mary out in Brockport and how it was, you know, through our giving that they were able to go out there and we could invest into the building. And this is linked to your guys' giving. So, and this is just a tremendous blessing that our tithing and our offering goes beyond just this building here. A lot of churches, when they give their tithing and their offerings, they, they keep it in their church, but that's not what we were taught. And that's not what we do as a fellowship. We believe going beyond these four walls, reaching other cities and other nations. And that's linked to your guys' giving. So just keep this in mind when you guys give to your tithes and offering that it, it goes beyond, you know, what we believe it does. Who knew that we would have Matt and Sarah in Syracuse all these years? And look what God has done. And they've got a beautiful building. It's in a great location. And God's just giving them favor as it is. This Sunday, they're having a soft opening. So they're going to have their first service there this Sunday, which is so exciting. So keep them in your prayers. As the ushers come forward this evening, um, just remember, guys, that you're tithing your offering. It goes beyond what you guys think. Brian, will you pray for the offering this evening? Sing a new song to the Lord, let the nation see that our God alone is wonderful. Every day his people shout, Lord has saved us, Jesus, Jesus, Savior of the nation, we proclaim your
song to the Lord. Let the nations see that our God alone is wonderful. Every day His people shout, the Lord has come. Jesus, Jesus, Savior of the nation, and we proclaim Your praise in Your name. platform workers and musicians. Um, our brother Michael Harris is going to come preach the gospel, so let's give him a round of applause this evening. All right, it's a privilege to be back in my home church and actually had the opportunity to preach for you. It's a privilege. It's not something that I take lightly, especially when it comes to preaching at a church that is 40 years old. It's uh, something that when pastor asked me to preach on, I'm praying, I'm contemplating. How do you preach something that's going to really speak to an older congregation? I'm used to preaching in a pioneer setting and working with people, new converts, and I believe God wants to go somewhere with this message tonight. It's about what He is going to do, what He's going to accomplish in this building, this congregation. We had the grand opening back in September, and I believe God wants to facilitate things and bring in people by the drums, that He wants to do something supernatural as His Spirit falls upon people. If you have your Bibles, I'm going to be reading out of a familiar portion of Scripture that no doubt you've read before, you've heard about, heard a number of sermons preached and proclaimed from. It's Joel 2.28 through 32, so that's Joel 2.28 through 32 this evening. And I've entitled this sermon, An Outpouring of God's Spirit. And I share this by way of introduction. This is an article that I found from RevivalPost.com, and it's talking about a revival that took place in the late 1850s, 1857. And this really transpired and came about because of a prayer meeting, and just speaks to the power of prayer and just what that has. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty for pulling down strongholds. As we get serious about God and contending for His Spirit in prayer, God can do the supernatural, and that's really what we need. And so this uh, revival that I'm about to read over for an introduction was started with a prayer meeting. A very small group of people gathered, business people, they gathered in New York City, Praying, lay a hold of God. It was six people at first, and then it began to grow and grow. And then revival swept through the United States. And this is what it goes on to say. By the end of March, every church and community hall was filled to capacity, and daily 10,000 men were gathered for prayer. Newspapers and telegraph spread the news of this excitement in New York. Similar prayer meetings were held all across the country. It was estimated that as probably as many as a million people were converted between 1858 and 1859. That was more than 3% of the United States population of less than 30 million people at that time. And by today's standards, what it says, that, uh, that is the equivalent of 210 million people that convert, converted to Christ in this day and age, if it was comparing the numbers now. And it goes on to say, isn't that something? 10,000 conversions were recorded weekly in New York City for a season. Evangelist Dwight L. Moody, many of you have heard of him before. A little before his death said of this revival, I'd like before I go hence to see the whole church of God quickened as it was in 1857. What a revival this truly was. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he could do this then, he can do it much more now. But we have to give ourselves to prayer, just like Jeremiah Lepner. He's the one that started the prayer meetings I was talking about. Expect the last move of God in the earth and a revival. 
And that's what God can do, what God has done in the past. I believe God wants to take us somewhere with this message because so many years, over the years, what God has done in this congregation, the words of knowledge, the prophecies, how he said that he was going to make this church a candlestick church, a conference center, that can happen again. And maybe for some people that dream is dead, but God still sits on the throne Jesus Christ still reigns. He's ascended to heaven. He intercedes for us, and all authority has been given to him. And so if God says something, it's not empty words just to speak for saying something. He's trying to speak with a purpose. He, he's speaking with an intent. His teachings in the Bible are so rich. There's so much that can be grasped from the teachings of the word of God. And so when he speaks something, when he speaks over the years, time and time again, he's going to do something. He's going to do something supernatural. He's going to pour his spirit so powerfully upon this place and draw people to this place that they're going to come in. Backsliders are going to get saved. The miraculous and the supernatural is going to take place. I saw a flyer that said, expect a miracle right in your corridor. And that's what we need to have. We need to have an expectancy that God can bring a miracle to this church, that he can bring a miracle to our personal lives, our circumstances, because that's what Jesus Christ wants to do, is he wants to pour his Holy Spirit on all flesh. So with that being said, let's go ahead and just jump into our main text, Joel 2.28. Through 32, And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions, and also on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and I will show wonders in heavens and, and in the earth, blood and fire, pillars of smoke. And the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there shall be deliverance, as the Lord has said, among the remnant whom the Lord calls. And I want to set a foundation tonight. I want to talk about an outpouring of God's Spirit. Now the word outpouring from the Cambridge Dictionary, it means a very large number of things produced at the same time. Something that flows out in a large amount or with strong force. An outpouring or is a gush or a flow of a fast stream of something. And that's exactly what God has promised that he's going to do in these last days. That we need his supernatural power in our lives. I'm talking about miraculous things. The miracles of the Bible are not just for the Bible. The things that happened thousands of years ago aren't just for that time. How the demonic, what, demoniac was saved. How he was bound and changed. It has a counter with Jesus Christ. The sick healed. Blind eyes being opened. The Holy Spirit falling calling upon people, people prophesying in the name of Jesus Christ. That isn't just for the Bible. That's for now. That's for today. God wants to pour his spirit. And so I want to talk about a move of God. And so we need this move of God. We need an outpouring of his spirit in our personal lives. And God can give us the hope. He can give us the encouragement that only his spirit can give. It was um, Ezekiel. He's prophesying to some dead bones. And God says, prophesy to them. Speak my words to them and their life will come into them. And so that's the power of the word of God, that life can come into you in a congregation, that life can come into your spirit no matter how dead you are in a church. Well, we've talked about this for 30 years, having revival, having people come in by the drums. Where are those people? And you're so pessimistic. I'll tell you what, I come with an expectancy that God is going to show up in church because that's what we should have, that God is going to come and meet us at this altar at the end of the service. When we have this altar space, and that's sacred, there's going to be an opportunity where we can respond and God's Spirit can be made alive to you. 
It's because the expectancy that you can have for the Word of God to move in your life. And so I want to ch be changed every service. I want my people I'm working with to get revelation and hear from God. Because if we don't have the Holy Spirit in this place, if we don't have Jesus Christ's Spirit in this place, we're just wasting our time. We might as well just have some social gathering to go out to dinner. Because without God's Spirit, we need that desperately for our lives. And so God can bring life where there is only death, where there's desolation. And this Holy Spirit can enable us to effectively live for Jesus Christ. And I thank God that we are a Pentecostal, that we can experience the Holy Spirit, that we can experience that in our personal lives, that we can prophesy in a church service, that we can be led, Holy Spirit led, how we can pray for the sick and lay hands on them and they shall recover, because we need that God's Spirit, we need that awakening. We need that in our personal lives. It's, some, it's tough to live as a Christian, so I can't imagine while living with that Spirit without the Holy Ghost. And so these miracles of God's Spirit being poured on the church are not just for the Bible. God can do that now, and He's going to do that. He's going to break the bondage of sin. We have to realize that Jesus Christ, He's already paid for people in this city. He, with his precious blood, he's already died for them. And there's people that he's prepared, co-workers, friends, and families that are going to come into this church that he's prepared ahead of time. Wasn't it um, Elijah that said to God, I'm the only one left, and kill me now. But God says to him, no, I've reserved 7,000 prophets. And so there's people in this city that God has preserved and called, and he's going to call them out of sin. And so we have to have that expectancy that God's spirit and power can move again. Joel 2.28 through 29, and it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions, and also on my ma main servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And so I will pour out my spirit in those days on all flesh. And so that's available to you and I, even if you are filled with the Holy Ghost, you can experience a refilling, a supernatural touch from God. And that's for all of us. That's not just for a select few, like some people would say, some sects would say, oh, that's for the apostles. That happened way back then. No, it's for every person that would come into this church, every person that would want to receive Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit is available for you and I. The Life Application Study Bible, powerful uh, study Bible. I rec highly recommend that study Bible for anybody that wants to get more understanding of how the word God applies, but it goes on to say this for Joel 2, 28 through 32 in the Life Application Study Bible. The Apostle Peter quoted this passage, the outpouring of the Spirit predicted by Joel in his sermon at Pentecost. While in the past God's Spirit seemed available to kings, prophets, and judges in specific places at specific times, Joel envisioned a time when the Spirit would be available to every believer at all times. Ezekiel also spoke of an outpouring of the Spirit, God willingly pouring out His Spirit now to anyone who calls on Him. No one is excluded. This applies to men, women, young and old, people of any status in life. And that's because the Holy Spirit, it's a gift. It's something that is available to you and I. If we desire that, we want that, we want it with a spirit of humility. God resists those that are prideful, but he gives grace to the humble. And so if we want that, we desire that outpouring of the God's Spirit, that's for you and I, that's for all of us tonight. And I want to talk about awakening by God's Spirit, because our generation is lost. We have a generation that is so confused just about even about everything in life. They have no direction. There's sin, sin that's so rampant. They're ungodly people. There's good people that need direction. They're confused about their own gender. And so God is not the author of confusion. And some people, they can sit in here, maybe even Christians, they can feel oppressed 
in their mind. They can feel a spirit of confusion upon them tonight. But I tell you what, Jesus Christ can break that because he's not the author of confusion. And his spirit, there's authority in the name of Jesus Christ. No greater name under heaven than the name of Jesus Christ. And he can awaken people in an instance and bring a great revival, get a hold of hearts. Joel 2.32, and it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. For in Mount Zion, in Jerusalem, there shall be deliverance, as the Lord has said, among the remnant who calls, whom the Lord calls. So whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And so that's a revival with his spirit that's going to fall on people, that they'll come and they'll repent, they'll actually turn from their sins. It's not going to be empty, it's going to be sincere, they'll sincerely mean it. And this is for anybody in the walks of life that they can come in, any people that are in your sphere of influence. There's people that God has specifically put in your sphere of influence that you see in the grocery store, you see when you go and work, or even you see them driving. There's people, neighbors that are going to come in, that they're going to get their hearts right with Jesus Christ, that His Holy Spirit is going to fall and draw people to this place, and He's going to do a supernatural working, a tremendous work, so much work work that he would have, can't even contain what's going to take place, that we wouldn't even be able to contain the stadiums we'd be filled, the revival that took place. It happened in Peter's day. 3,000 people got saved. He stood up. He's preaching the Word of God. This is a nation that is spiritually drained, spiritually dead. And 3,000 people get saved at the preaching of Peter. Not a tremendous preacher, but a very simple message. And it was the Word of God, the Spirit that fell upon people. And 3,000 people receive Jesus Christ or baptized. And that's what God can do again. He can do that right here in just one instance. Just think of the possibility of that outreach. Think of that Rock 180. If you had 3,000 people get, to, get their lives right and turn to Jesus Christ, that would be tremendous. Acts 2.41. Then those who gladly received His word were baptized, and that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. And so what God has done in the past, He can certainly, most certainly do it again. If a Christian has experienced a breakthrough in their lives, do you cheer on with them? Do you pray with them and praise God with them? Because if God has done something for them, He can do something for you as well. He can bring that promotion. He could bring that increase to your life, the better hours, maybe financial blessing, whatever it might be. What He's done for somebody else, He can do it again for your personal life because miracles are transferable. And so as we desire God's Spirit, as we desire an outpouring of His Spirit, we contend that for that in our own personal lives. We get a hold of God in prayer. We can experience revivals just like they had in the Azusa, Azusa Street Revival in the early 1900s. And then the Jesus People Movement, as he was talking about, uh, Nelson was mentioning that movie, Jesus Revolution. Powerful move, movie. I saw it the other day. And just how God was moving moving on hippies, bringing them out, and that's what our fellowship was drawn on, built off of, and that's what Calgary Chapel was built off of, that movement, and so that's what God's Spirit can do, that's what His awakening can do, that He can give people purpose, direction, and destiny. And Jesus even talked about how plentiful the harvest was, that it's there for our taking, that it's on the trees, it's ready for our picking, that it's prepared, just as I was mentioning, that there are people specifically that God is going to bring into this place. There's backslidden people, there's uh, people that you're in relationships with, sons and daughters. We have to remember that God had saved a man by the name of Saul, who later became Paul, this was a man that was persecuting the church, causing all kinds of havoc for the church. God gets a hold of him in Acts 9-6. 
and he says, Lord, what do you want me to do? And so if God can get a hold of a Saul and he becomes a Paul, he, why not get a hold of your uh, a son or a daughter that's backslidden, a backslidden neighbor, an atheist, the most hardcore, staunch sinner? Because I'll tell you what, they can't argue a testimony of this church. They can't argue a testimony of a changed life through Jesus Christ. You can refute all kinds of things, but you can't argue a changed life, which is a miracle. Is that that guy that was delivered from the Bible? I mentioned him. That demonic, the demoniac that was bound in chains, and the people, they couldn't deny that change. They couldn't deny that transformation that Jesus Christ did. This was a man that they thought was lost, had no hope until he encountered a living God in Jesus Christ. And so you can't argue a miracle, a changed testimony. And so that, that harvest is ripe for the picking. That's ripe for ours. We just have to contend and believe God for that. This is a lovely building with a lot of space. I'm, I know God is not finished yet that he even wants to knock down some walls in here and bring in so many people. I'm sorry, guys. I know you don't want to have to do more work. You just got ready. But at the expense of revival, it's worth it. And so it's worth it. Work is worth it for the kingdom of God if people get saved, get their hearts right with Jesus Christ. And so that's what I'm about. I want to see people saved. I want to see the supernatural. I want this revival to take place. John 4, 35, do you not say that there are still four months and then comes the harvest? Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields, for they are ready and white for the harvest. So that's there for us. That's available for us. We can take that. That's for our taking. That's a promise in the Word of God, for the Bible says in the Word of God, it says the promises of God are yes and amen. They're there for the taking. God has given people vision. He's given people direction. He's given people a desire. And He can bring that dream, that desire, that vision to fruition as you just lay a hold of that promise, lay a hold of the Word of God. And just let God get to work. Rest in who Jesus Christ is. Because some people, they feel really weak in tonight. They feel really exhausted. Maybe there's somebody here that feels like quitting, throwing in the towel. I believe there might be somebody here that feels like that. Rest in Jesus Christ. Let His Spirit fall on you because He can encourage you. He can bring to life what is dead again. Supernaturally, He can bring you life to you. And you have to realize how valuable you are to this church. And God drawing you out to this place and the people that love you here. And so you have to remember that. And so God is faithful. And one of the things that I highly recommend is that you take a look. Maybe many of you have watched it. Uh, Pastor Greg's sermon about a hastening because there's going to be a supernatural outpouring where it, people, they get revelation quick. They catch on to the things of God, that there's going to be a hastening upon lives and hearts. There was a story that he shared. Just these uh, pastors, I believe they maybe were in Ireland or some other country. I don't remember specifically, but there were they were ministering for many years, had a small church, nothing happening. I believe it was about 12 years. And then there's an outpouring of God's Spirit, a tremendous revival that takes place. And they were ministering for over 12 years. And what God did in three days, He did more than what He had did in the 12 years. And so that's what God can do here. And I believe that's what God wants to do. And so I want to talk about an awakening tonight. And so God can use you despite your age. It doesn't matter how old or how young you are, God can use you. You have a purpose, you have a destiny that God wants to further his kingdom through you. And what does it say in our main text? It says that your young people will be used, old people will be used alike. Joel 2.28, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions. Old men seeing dreams. Young men seeing visions. And so God can bring that to fruition in your life. He can use you powerfully even in old age. It was Jesus Christ that was used at the age of 12. He's 
with the teachers, and people are just amazed by his wisdom. They can even use Rowan at his young age. He could do something. God could pour his spirit powerfully upon him. I'm amazed about Pastor Wayman Mitchell. We know that he was 91 years old when he went to go on and be with the Lord, but even at 90, I believe he was close to 90, traveling all over the world, he had so much energy preaching healing crusades, preaching to the sick, preaching to at revival services and conferences. And even Pastor Cassio, I'm sure his assistant, I believe, had trouble keeping up with him because of all the energy he had. And so he was used powerfully in his old age. And there was a woman that, uh, 84 years old, she got saved, and God's using her in the nursing home. She's preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ to the nurses, the nurses' aides, the residents in the nursing home, people are getting saved powerfully through her. And so God can use you. You can have impact even in your old age. And God can do something with you in these last days that you wouldn't expect as he pours his spirit on you, as he falls on hearts and lives. And I want to talk about an expectation of God moving. Because we need that expect expectancy that God can move in our lives that he can move in our area, that he can move in our nation. Because God's Spirit is faithful. It's more powerful than anything we can imagine. And he will draw people to the foot of the cross. The church is supposed to be a place of refuge, a place of sanctuary where people can find rest for their souls and hearts. And I believe that there's not going to be a church big enough to contain what God wants to do in his church and with his people. I preached this at my church and they must have thought I was crazy because I have a handful of people. I have a pioneer work and I'm preaching and what God's going to do, how God is going to bring people into this church. We'll have to find another building. We'll have to pack out the stadium. But God can do that. He can bring out the souls by the drones as they fall, his spirit falls on people. Joel 2.28-2.29. And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions, and also on my men servants and on my maid servants I will pour out my spirit in those days. So I will pour out my spirit in those days. I would do a mighty work by my power and by my might. Such a plentiful harvest in these end times, that it cannot be gathered, that we cannot pick it fast enough. That's what God can do in these last days. He can bring that supernatural increase into your own personal life. Amos 9.13, it speaks of such a great harvest that it can't even be gathered. And I believe that's what God wants to accomplish. That's what God wants to do here in this Brighton congregation. It's not by accident that God has brought you to a large building that is going to grow out and then expand. Amos 9.13, the time will come, says the Lord, when the grain and the grapes will grow faster, and then they can be harvested. Then the Terence vineyards on the hills of Israel will drop, trip with sweet wine. And so that's talking about a blessing. That's talking about a harvest that cannot be gathered. Commentary on those verses says, these verses describe a time of such abundant crop that the people wouldn't be able to harvest them all. Such abundant crop. Just think of that for just a moment. Let that sink in. Just how powerful that is and what God can accomplish. And that's what we need for our personal lives. We need that spirit and I want to talk about an awakening in our own personal church and an awakening in the church. And so our church needs to be awakened by the Holy Spirit. It's just not outside in society. We need that in our own personal church. A desire that God would pour His Spirit on all flesh. This is not for select people. He wants this for each and every one of us. He wants this right in the church. Joel 2.28, and it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And so the Holy Spirit, this supernatural power, is something that we need. It's essential for all of Christian living and effective living. We can't even confess who Jesus Christ is without the Holy Spirit. We can't even get 
revelation reasonably without the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit to get a hold of our hearts. And that's how God accomplishes it through His Spirit. And so in this church age, in this year of the Gentile, we need that Spirit. We need a God to awaken our hearts. Because there's many churches that are compromised with sin. They're allowing homosexuals behind the pulpit. They don't stand for truth. Homosexual person is welcome to come in here and hear the Word of God. Anybody in sin is welcome to come in here and hear the Word of God. But there's going to be an opportunity that they have to receive. They can continue to come here. They're welcome, but you have to make a decision to break with the old life of sin just like everybody else. And so there's churches that are compromised. And so we need to preach and proclaim truth like never before. We need to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. We need to preach sin and call it for what it is because that's God can move in an atmosphere where it's holy, where there's holiness. I love each and every person that comes into this place because I see the potential, the possibility of what Christ can do in their lives. No matter what walk of life they come from, how Christ can get a hold of their hearts, how they can repent, how they they can turn from their sin and leave differently. And so we need to be a standard for the area churches in this area. We need to lift up the gospel of Jesus Christ, lift up our voices like a trumpet, proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ, and we'll watch His Spirit fall on the church because that's what we need. We need that Holy Spirit that helps us to be sanctified or set apart to a holy and righteous God. And one commentary said this about Joel. Certainly the church today needs a new filling of the Spirit of God. Apart from the ministry of the Spirit, believers cannot witness with power. You know, that's one of the reasons for the Holy Spirit is to witness with a power and effectiveness. And Acts 1.8, it says about that. Understanding the Scriptures, that's the importance of getting revelation and then glorifying Christ. Praying in accordance with the will of God. And so we oftentimes we have these laundry lists of things that we want to come and pass in our lives. But are we praying in accordance with God's will? Because that's what the Holy Spirit does. And so we need that spirit. It goes on to say a deeper working in the spirit in God's people. Leading to confession of sin, repentance, forgiveness, and unity within the church. And that's what we want. We want people to get it Get it right. We want people to turn from their sins and repent. What we saw in Asbury, Kentucky, that was just the tip of the iceberg of what God wants to do. How that, that went on for a couple weeks and then it, it just uh, died down. God is going to do something more than that. And I want to talk about being aware of the sign of the times or being aware of the times. And so we have to be aware of the signs. We have to be aware of that Jesus Christ, He can come back at any time. There's no greater need right now that we need an outpouring of this Spirit that I'm talking about, this outpouring of the, in the last days. And we must be able to discern the signs of the times, just the moral decay of our society. We must be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. People will sit in the church and they'll say, oh, that preaching's not for me, it's not for me at all. Well, be sensitive of the Holy Spirit. I've always, when I've come to a service, I've always had the expectancy that God's going to speak to me, and God can speak powerfully. There was a backslider that heard preaching on dating, and this is a man that is married, that uh, really probably doesn't care much about dating, but he hears a sermon, sermon with Pastor Greg preaching on dating. The guy gets gloriously saved, gives his life to Jesus Christ, because there was something in that message for him, even though it didn't seem the most applicable to him. And so we must be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. We must be sensitive to what God wants to try to do in our own hearts, because we can miss the point. We can miss the point that Jesus Christ is right in our service, that His Holy Spirit is there. It was uh, Jesus Christ that was God in the flesh, the Messiah. He's preaching, He's healing the sick, He's doing the supernatural, His ministry is growing. And people miss the mark, the religious people, the people that go to church, the people that are supposed to know that Jesus Christ is who He says He is, they miss the mark. 
And so we, can, we need to be prepared. We need to be prepared of these signs of the times and just how bad everything is getting in society. Joel 2.30-31. through 31. And I will show wonders in heaven and in earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. So God has been showing wonders in heaven. He's been showing wonders and signs. And he's going to continue to do that. But there's, we got to realize the climate of just our society. And that we have to be aware, are we making the most of these opportunities? There was a tremendous sermon that was just uh, preached by Pastor Scott Lamb at the conference. And I don't want to give it away, but it just speaks to the urgency of the hour of Christ rapturing up his church and taking his church and I look forward to that with an expectancy that's a blessed hope for you and I that we can go and we can leave the earth and we can stand in God's presence. But that time is drawing near and so it could be nearer than we think. I highly recommend you watch that sermon because that really gets you to, to think about how close could the return of Christ be. Ephesians 5.16, redeeming the time because the days are evil. So the time, the days are evil, they're Life is but a vapor. It's here today and gone tomorrow. We don't know how much time that we have to get people saved. Who's to say you could pray with that last person on outreach and then Christ comes back and says, God says to his son, go get my bride, my church. I want them right now. And he says, and because that last person prayed. And so that's, that's, dear, that's near to us, nearer than ever before. And so we have to live with the expectancy that Christ could come back at any moment because it's imminent, it's going to happen. There's, we talk about revivals, a great awakening. You know, I believe God wants to do that right in the United States, but let's be honest, he's doing it all over the world. He's doing it in nations. I was talking to a pastor a couple weeks ago, actually not even a part of our fellowship and uh, he was talking about how South Korea was one of the largest sending churches now that they have people getting saved. And their Africa is experiencing revival. They're experiencing revival throughout the world. And so these revivals are already happening. But I believe that God wants to do that right here in the United States. I remember several years ago how Pastor Greggy preached a sermon about how America is not mentioned in the book of Revelations. And one of the reasons he believed, he believed that and preached about it, maybe you've heard that sermon, he said that, uh, that America, the most of it would be taken up in a rapture because of the great revival that God wants to do. And so I believe God wants to do that again with his outpouring of his spirit before taking up his church. But he can do it very quickly. This can happen in a couple of days. This can happen in a month's time, even if Christ were to come back before the end of the, of the year. And I believe this is the heart of God, that every man and every woman would turn to God, that he would pour his spirit upon him. Joel 2.32, and it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there shall be deliverance, as the Lord has said, among the remnant whom the Lord calls. So there's deliverance in the name of Jesus Christ. There is healing for every heart. And this is the heart of God, that people would get saved, that people would give their lives to him. And Jesus Christ can do that supernaturally in abundance. He can do that supernaturally, and I believe he wants to do that once again. He wants to bring those revivals that we heard about, that we read about. He doesn't want us to read, just read about them. He wants us to experience them. And he can do that again, and I believe that that's what God wants to do. As we lay a hold of God in prayer, as we have an expectancy that his Holy Spirit can fall and will fall on us, God can do the supernatural. He can show up where we don't think his spirit is. When we don't have the energy, the strength to even get out of bed, God can give us new strength. He can give us new energy, and I believe he's going to do something supernatural in these last days. With that being said, if I could just have every head bowed, every eyes closed for a moment. There might be some people in this place that you're not right with God. Perhaps you were drawn out to this place. Somebody invited you out. You didn't know what to expect coming to this church. I preached about an outpouring of God's Spirit. 
As that spirit is real, it will fall on you. But the first and most important decision that each and every one of us need to make is just giving our lives to Jesus Christ. Going on 20 years ago, I gave my life to Jesus Christ and he changed my world. He did a complete 180 in my life. I didn't know what to expect. And so there might be people in this place that are not right with God. You don't have the assurance of uh, being right with God tonight, but you'd like that assurance. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of the Lord, and not one is righteous. We all need what Jesus Christ has to offer through salvation, turning to him, turning from our sin. And Jesus Christ will answer that prayer every time. And so if you're unsaved, you're not right with God, and you'd like to get your heart right with God tonight, you'd like that assurance, being right with Him, making heaven your home, just raise your hand. Anybody at all will be happy to pray with you, front to back, side to side of the building. Anybody at all, that would be you. You want to get your heart right with God tonight. Perhaps there's people in this place that you're backslidden. There's people that you're backslidden in your heart. You want to get your heart right with Jesus Christ tonight. You're backslidden. God says that he's married to the backslider. He wants to bring you back home just like the prodigal son. You're wandering away. Maybe you compromised in your sin. You're not living right, but you want to get your heart right with God tonight. You're unsaved. You're backslidden. You'd like to turn to Jesus Christ. Anybody at all? This is between you and God. Nobody's looking around. Front to back, side to side, in this building, a group this size. You want to receive what Jesus Christ has for you tonight. Just raise your hand, anybody at all. Okay, I'm speaking to Christians tonight. I trust that God has spoken to you. Very simple message. Maybe we've heard it a thousand times, but we need just this encouragement because I believe God is taking this church somewhere in these last days and he wants to accomplish a mighty work. And so these altars are open. You can come and lay a hold of God if God has spoken to you in any area.
take as much time as you need praying. We're going to just, let's praise God in this place. Yeah, we just have to have a vision for that harvest. And one uh, story I wanted to mention that was kind of an encouragement to me, there was an outreach for Pastor Paul that happened recently in Greece. There was a man that said, I want to just sit on the, can I sit in the bench in the mall and just witness to people? And so this is an older man. If he can be used by God for that purpose, just to sit on the bench and witness to people, there's many of us that are able-bodied that God can use powerfully. And so just be encouraged by this message because I believe God is going to do something in these coming days, the coming months before Christ comes back. And I do want to mention one last thing. I don't even know if uh, Christine is in here. I did want to say one thing to her before we left. Okay. And somebody just go grab her real quick. Just want to give her a feel God is laying it upon my heart to share something with her even before I came and preached here tonight. And so I want to obey God. I want to be faithful. So I believe God is going to speak through it. All right. That is good. I won't hold you guys up too much longer. I don't want anybody falling from the balcony. I want Darren to stay up there. We don't want to have to pray and lay hands on him, okay? That's not the miracle I want. If that's the miracle we have to get to get revival, I'll take it. But that's not the miracle I want. I don't want him falling down out of the balcony. I have to play a Jeopardy song or something. Like the final round. Darren, can you hit that music for us, please? I'll just come down here. Come down in the crowd. So, Christina, I just wanted to share something with you that I wanted to be a God about. And so, sometimes you can feel like, you know, just so much time has gone by. There's things that God is going to do in your life. He's going to give you the desires of your heart. I don't want to specifically know what that means. You've been praying for some things for a number of years, and God is going to bring those to pass in your life. And it's going to happen relatively soon. And so just keep on contending for that, believing that. Don't lose faith. Uh, Galatians 6, 9 says, Do not grow weary while doing, because you will see a reward in a harvest. And so can write that Bible verse down, because I believe God wants to remind you of his goodness and his faithfulness. He's going to do something in your life.
supernaturally, and it's going to be him that does it, and you're going to realize that. And the Bible says that he'll give you the desires of your heart, and so he will because you've been faithful to this church for a number of years, even when some of your friends maybe are not here anymore. You've been faithful. You've seen people come and go. So just remember, he's going to reward you openly for that because you are valuable to this congregation. And sometimes you think, well, God has forgotten about me. He hasn't forgotten about you. And he's going to make good on his promises and his word for you, okay? He's going to bring those things into fruition. And so just stay the course, you know, and I believe it's going to happen soon. I don't know what all this is. You know maybe specifically, but God is going to bring it to fruition. And I'm just going to pray for you, okay? And so the church, just pray with me. Father God, we just thank you for your truth. We thank you for your fruition, oh God, of this word, oh God. We pray that you would speak to hearts. We thank you for your blood, oh God, your faithfulness, oh God. We thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. Let it be. All right. Thank you. I'm going to turn it over to our, uh, let me get up here. Our brother Nelson, it's a privilege to come and preach here. I appreciate your patience. It's always a privilege and we appreciate your prayers as well. And just God is doing something good in Brockport. Continue to pray for us as we continue to pray for you because we really do appreciate this church, your investment, and we cover your prayers because they, they reach heaven. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Two services on the Holy Spirit. God's trying to tell us something, church. You guys lay hold of that. Remember, outreach this weekend, prayers at 10. Um, outreach is at 11. Tom, will you close us in prayer this evening, please? God bless you, church.